A year ago in USA Today, there was an article entitled, Caroling or Silent Nights, A Holiday Tradition Vanishes. I'd like to share with you some excerpts from that article. Most everybody knows what Christmas caroling is, but who does it anymore? Except for pockets of passion, traditional in-person neighborhood caroling is practiced by a shrinking fraction of the population. The reasons for this range from the paranoid, it's a plot by the secular humanists against Christians, to the prosaic, people would rather stay home and watch football. Americans are too busy or too lazy or too intimidated to sing in public. People are afraid of offending their neighbors or in invading their privacy, and neighborhoods are less close-knit. It is so rare today that there's actually a website that tells you how to treat Christmas carolers who come to your door. <laughs> but it's not too late to revive Christmas caroling, says Michael Hahn, professor of church music at Southern Methodist University in Dallas. It will take imagination and a willingness to break the ice, he says. Singing is an act that naturally enhances the sense of community, whether it's take me out to the ball game, the national anthem, or Christmas carols. Now, I remember caroling when I grew up. But it occurred to me that as I was thinking about what these children would learn for this program, that many of them may not know a lot of the traditional carols. And so, besides Silent Night or Joy to the World, there are so many other interesting carols that I decided that we would teach them many of those carols for this program. Some of you have on your rows a copy of our Christmas carol songbook. I put about three or four on most of the rows. Some of them are pink, some are green, some are gray. And here's what I want you to do with that. I would like you to take it and any other copies you see laying around at the end of the program and use it to sing with your kids for somebody, whether it's grandma around the Christmas tree or whether it's the community senior center or your neighbors or whatever. The kids know those songs, so you can take it and just have a little fun with it. After our um, dress rehearsal on Thursday, the fourth graders and I went to the Lancaster Senior Center and we sang for a small group there. It was a lot of fun. We even were accompanied by, what was that instrument? A musical saw. <laughs> a gentleman had a saw there and he accompanied us. It was real fun. And I am aware that uh, some of you had to cancel your Christmas caroling this afternoon just because of our program being postponed to today. But there's only, there's four days left. There's still time. You can get your kids out and sing somewhere. And you will notice to get you warmed up, uh, we actually have you singing a number of times through this program. So we're glad to have you here. All of you who made it, we're so glad you braved the elements and came out. And now we will sing about Christmas. Third graders, I don't know if they can see it.
verses. If you never heard the song before, you'll hear it three times before it's your turn. In singing out Christmas, we use the word Noel several times. You will hear the word Noel in two other songs in the program. Noel is a French word that means Christmas or Christmas carol. Another phrase you heard in our last song, as it fell upon at night, was an excessive Gloria. And it's also Gloria is a shortened version for Gloria in Excelsior Deo, which means glory to God in the highest. The words the angels sang to the shepherds.
as the, chil as the children get in places for the next song, I want to tell you just a little bit about it. As you see in your program, you will be singing along again on the final stanza and chorus. So we like to hear you sing. It makes us feel good. Twas in the moon of winter time is often called the Huron Carol. The Huron Carol is the Canadian Christmas hymn, Canada's oldest Christmas song, written in 1643 by, and I don't know if I'm going to say this right, it's kind of French, Jean de Brebeau, or something like that, a missionary among the Huron. He wrote the lyrics in the native language of the Huron Wendat people. Now, the song's original title is Jesus Ahotonia. Jesus, he is born. The melody is a French folk song. Now, Jesse Middleton wrote the English lyrics that we're going to sing many, many years later in 1926. And they're a little bit different from the Huron version. In both the original Huron and the English, however, the song tries to transplant the story of Jesus' birth into another culture. So you will notice that Jesus was born in a lodge of broken bark and wrapped in a robe of what? Rabbit. Rabbit skin. He is surrounded by hunters instead of shepherds, and the magi are portrayed as chiefs from afar that bring him fox and beaver pelts instead of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And it also uses the traditional Algonquian name, Gitche Manitou, for God. Now, all of the second graders would love to be playing drums on this piece, but um, we want to make sure you hear the, the words, so that's why we don't have them all doing it. <clears throat> um, if you have trouble understanding the words, look in your little cor uh, Christmas carol songbook, and they're all in there. And don't forget to join us for stanza four. Thank you.
we have two sets of uh, chimes at once in a while, we need three sets. So that's why you see people going back and forth. And by the way, I am certainly not uh, against the applause. It's just that we don't have time to stop and acknowledge it. So please understand, at 4 o'clock, the next program starts in here. So we're just keeping it moving. And now, as the uh, uh, third and fourth graders are coming up with their little songbooks, I wanted to tell you about something. When I was their age, we did something called in-gathering. How many of you have ever heard of in-gathering? Okay. Well, I want to tell you, I still have the clipping from the church bulletin that says that our team, our six-member fifth grade team, earned $246 for the poor and needy that year. And I was really proud of that. You know, I took in gathering, and I think my friends did too, very seriously. We really felt like we were helping. And when I went to each door, I prayed to Jesus to, you know, touch those hearts, to give some money, or at least to to read our little magazine that we left them. So it was a big deal to us. Well, things are different now. Not a lot of people have heard of In Gathering, but we still have mission projects. And what it says in your bulletin, it says, on their own, but not alone. How many of you parents um, have heard of this project? Okay, we need more of you to know about it because this is the project for the educational system of the Seventh-day Adventist schools this year. We are raising money through this uh, project to send to South Africa. You know, in Africa, there are many family units that are headed by children. Due to the HIV AIDS crisis, these children have lost their parents, their aunts, their uncles, everyone that is in the older generation. They have no family to care for them, but they are determined to live. They stay together, the older ones helping the younger ones, struggling every day to survive. I'm told, I'm told that in South Africa, 5,500 a day die from HIV AIDS. Um, as you can see, <laughs> we don't have it very hard here compared to some other parts of the world. So last year, the project was to help feed more than 90 of these child-headed orphan homes each weekend for a year. Their school days were taken care of, but their weekends, they had no food. This year, the focus again is those orphans in South Africa. The students in the United States, Seventh-day Adventist schools, are raising $125,000 to help build a school. Currently, they meet in a large corrugated storage container. At Browning, we really want to teach the children to learn how to serve others. And this is one of the ways we can do it. So we don't have any of the little in-gathering cans tonight, and we don't have any offering baskets to pass around. Instead, we have the little hands of the first and second graders. And right now, while we sing, and I hope you will pick up your uh, little 
songbook here and turn to number 13, Silent Night. While we sing, they're going to go around and, and uh, collect your gifts, whatever you can give to this project for these children in South Africa. Whether it be a one, a five, a 10, or even a check, we trust those kids. They're your kids, so we know we can trust them. There's a big bucket up here for your offerings. And so we will sing while while they go out and collect, and uh, when we come to it came upon a midnight clear, kids, that's your clue to start coming back up here. Okay, first and second graders, go ahead.
had some more songs we could sing, but right now I think we'll go to Away in a Manger featuring Mackenzie. And uh, if you can't see her, well, we could move her over on a little stand there, but we'll see.
for you to sing with us. And while the kindergarten, I mean, the uh, yeah, while they're going to their seats, I want to just tell you that this is a very old Polish carol. And we don't sing it the meter quite the way it's in the hymnal. We sing it just a little bit different. But I know that you'll pick up on that very quickly. So infant holy, infant lowly. Let's sing it. Our next Christmas carol is a rather new one, written by young Alfred Burt. It's called Some Children See Him. Mr. Burt, well, he was, a, he was a pastor, had started the tradition in his family that their annual Christmas card to friends would be an original Christmas carol to sing. And he wrote the music and words for these carols from 1922 to 1941. And he was a self-taught musician. So when his son showed an interest in music, he decided he was going to really encourage this and give him all the training he could. He got him a shiny, brand new trumpet, and soon Alfred, his son, began composing fanfares for the church organist. Her name was Wyla Hudson. She became a great musical friend to him and an important mentor. Well, Alfred graduated from college, University of Michigan, in 1942. And at that time, his father said, OK, son, it's time for you to take over the tradition. You're going to start writing the Christmas carol now. You have far more training than me. Anyhow, you can make them really sound nice. So it was that Alfred began writing a Christmas carol every Christmas season. He wrote a total of 15. They're known as the Alfred Burt Carols. If you go to alfredburtcarols.com, you can see them and hear them. Unfortunately, Alfred Burt died at the age of 33. So the one we're singing today is one of his last. I love the way it talks about children from many different countries, many different cultures, many different races, all looking at Jesus. So we hope you enjoy Some Children See Him.
verses one, two, three, and four. Come all ye faithful. It'll be played by the bells and we ask you to sing with the bells on the second time through.
two parts there. So we're going to ask for, hmm, which looks like the smartest fruit? Ah, okay, I'm just going to say the middle. Okay, the middle's gonna go, go tell, tell it on the mountain. And the sides are gonna sing with the kindergartners, preschoolers, first and second graders. Go tell it on the mountain, okay? So let's start, middle, third and fourth. Ready, here we go now. Go tell, tell on the mountain again. Go tell, keep it going now. Mountain, go tell, mountain. All the girls and everything. Go tell on the mountain. Then Jesus Christ is born to again. Here, one. Go tell, tell on the mountain. Go tell, tell on the mountain. great and grand principal coming up to close our program. And we're going to sing We Wish You a Merry Christmas right after the prayer, so don't leave. And then we need to get ready for the four o'clock program, don't we? It's gonna be fast. It's really fast. As most of you probably don't know, my office sits directly above the music room. <laughs> so I've, I've heard this program in bits and snatches for the last two months. Um, and it's been interesting. And it's great to see it finally, finally come together in, in uh, the final form. And it's been, it's been a treat. I think these kids have done a great job. And I think they deserve a round of applause. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the for youth and for their energy, and we're thankful for the, the music that's come forth, and we're thankful for our parents. Provide them blessings and traveling mercies as we depart our ways. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we transition up here, uh, I've been told that we need some help, so if you have anybody that wants to give us a little help to move some stuff out of the way for the next program, which will be starting probably in about 15 minutes. It would be appreciated. Thank you. We gotta do it one more time. Sorry, Mrs. Swinger just lost it there. Here we go. We wish you a merry. 